And also thank you to everybody and thank you to Scala for hosting this event uh, and having us here today. So uh, I am Anne Marie Steven. I have been in retail for a very long time. So the first part of my career, I'm going to say maybe it was a decade. Uh, I was in retail, I was in stores, and that's, those are the roots from which I come. And about 10 years ago, I got into retail technology, right? So happy accident that now I find myself in many years later. At that time, I was evangelizing new technology and data, which I didn't realize that's what I was doing. Uh, so it was kismet that I had the opportunity to sit with um, Guy Kawasaki just the other day, who is the chief, former chief evangelist of Apple. And I said to him, I said, you know, I was evangelizing things and I didn't even know it, right? So we was talking about video analytics at that time 10 years ago. Uh, and that was around what was happening in in-store. So how many people coming in, how many people were leaving the store uh, through a camera technology, through a camera-based technology. And then from that point, that was really the introduction to retail about using conversion rate in stores and physical environments. And from there, my experience grew into mobile and uh, startup world and continuing to build on what was happening in the physical environment, leveraging mobile technology, big data and analytics and location. So what I've done is now founded a company around um, really emerging tech and retail, because that's where I spend my time. So what I do is I translate between technologists, sit over here, really smart people who develop these amazing products, uh, hardware, software, data, and I sit uh, between them and the end user, being a retailer or brand, right? And I sit in the middle and help, help them understand each other, right? So when we develop product, what uh, utility do they have for the end user, being the retailer brand, and for the retailer brand, bringing that back, saying what technologies is it that I need to be looking at and using for my uh, business. So that's what we do at Florida. Yeah. We hear a lot about beacons. I get asked to talk about beacons a lot uh, and speak to that. So beacons have a place, right? I don't know that it's sorted just yet, but I do believe they have a place. What's interesting and exciting to me, and I wanted to share this, uh, we certainly want to share this, is because um, what InMarket has done, you may or may not be familiar with them, is created a network, right? So right now we know about that beacons, when they're in a place, in a location, you have to use an app, right? You open the app. app the, the trick is, is app adoption is really low, right? So we have 2 to 4% of consumers that are in the retail environment using apps. That means 95% of your shoppers are not being talked to in some form or fashion. So it doesn't diminish the value of the beacon, but I think it allows us to give some opportunity to, to rethink maybe how we approach beacon. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to show in market is that what they've done is created a network, right? So the theme that I keep seeing that I'm hearing even us talk about is creating new networks of communication, right? So we think of a network, NBC, CBS, right. <laughs> cable channels, right? All that expansiveness. Uh, that's how I like to think of it. But th think of these as networks. What they've done now is create an app network. So we saw some wearables and things like they're actually launched on wearables in market. But app uh, network. So if it's a lifestyle app, health app, you know, uh, communications, media apps. So they have a network of apps that they are communicating through. So now, once they go into a retail location, whatever your location may be, the reach becomes much more expansive because now you have an app network that you have the ability to grab more audience and have more reach. So right now they're, they're at around 30% uh, more reach versus 2 to 4%. And as you continue to add apps, you have more opportunity to communicate with more people because that's the challenge we see with Beacons, I think, right now. And a lot of these new technologies is scale, right? How do we scale to reach and communicate more people? And that's what they've done here. So in this campaign with Hillshire, um, the objective, the other, the other piece of it is, there's a couple things I wanted to touch on here, is they created that awareness for this brand. That was the objective. They were launching a brand or a new product. Um, we've heard a lot about kind of uh, channel, I'd say inter uh, line of business, channel conflict almost, right? Uh, in the lines of business in an organization, one of the things I've heard them speak and one of the things that they talk about with their company is that they don't have that division in the channels. They have a goal, they have an objective, and they actually work together uniformly to achieve that goal. Uh, so in this case, what they just wanted to do is create brand awareness in a hyper-local uh, fashion, and that's where the beacons came in, and they uh, had like a 20x increase in, in, in purchase intent, and they were, the, they were able to measure. And they, they had 6,000 impressions, in for, or uh, uh, yeah, 6,000 engagements in 48 hours. Pretty good. The next one's one of your 
partners too, isn't it? Yeah, so this is a startup, right? So they focus a lot on emerging technology. So we talk about creating ways, you know, the idea with the consumer experience is I don't want to, we're in Silicon Valley. We like talk about like, you know, disrupting, you know, technologies that disrupt things. And I like disruption. I like the idea of that. But when we're talking about consumers, I don't necessarily want to disrupt you, right? I want to enhance your experience, right? I want to make it seamless and fluid. I want to get in the, I don't want to take you off the path of what you normally do. I want to enhance the path of what you normally do. So in this case, uh, this is a technology. It's new, uh, uh, young uh, female software engineer developed this for cosmetic brands and allows me to try on, imagine if you're L'Oreal or if you're Estee Lauder, whatever, whatever your brand may be, I can try on a color palette and also then consume it directly from the device as well. And what she's done is really smart is I can use, there's a couple things that are really neat about it. One, I can use someone who looks like me. In this case, it's an Asian 25-year-old woman. If I don't want to take my own photo, I can just use a likeness, looks like me. I can also use it on my mobile. I can use it on my personal computer at home. I can use it uh, on my iPad, which is what this was designed for, this particular piece. And I can also do it at a kiosk in the store. So now I can create a shopping list that I can use anywhere, right? So I can try it on, and maybe I want to uh, go and maybe I'm going by the store. Now I can, can go in, look at the kiosk, or look at my device, and I can actually make a purchase direct from the website after I've tried on all these different combinations. Exactly. Or, and it's coming later in this video, but you can take a picture of yourself as well. In some cases, you just don't feel like it, right? So maybe you just want to use the likeness. Right. Um, oh, this one. This one is another one of the partners. This is another, yeah, yeah. So this is another interesting startup. So we talk about networks and channels, right? So this is thematic to me. Uh, what are the different opportunities to reach out and communicate with people? Again, another high location you might be noticing is coming up a little bit. I think location is going to play a significant part as we continue to move forward into the future. Connecting with people in the time and place where they're at and the place that's most relevant to them in a contextually relevant way. So we have a company called Sightly. Um, and what they do is use hyperlocal uh, proximity marketing based on YouTube. So YouTube's an interesting opportunity that people don't consider, uh, or I don't know if it's considered enough, but something to just put on the radar. 225 million YouTube unique visitors on YouTube every month, and that's just in the US. It's actually one billion globally every month. That is substantial reach. So what they've been able to do is take that channel and then segment based on proximity, based on location, Proximity being, it could be on my mobile device, it could be on my PC, it could be on an iPad, any one of those where you're looking at a YouTube. And then uh, uh, customize the message, in this case Wendy's, to that particular audience around this campaign. So it was a collegiate campaign, so it was Go Huskers, Go whatever the other colleges, teams were, I'm an Illini, Go Illini, whatever the other two were. Um, but the, the point being is they were able to segment that population and then brand searches for that particular product in that campaign went up 120%, right? So getting hyper-local, and that's the, the theme that we saw with in-market as well, using a network that actually has a, a hyper-local targeted reach to, for more effective communication. 